When getting into Wi-Fi hacking, it's important to select a card that supports monitor mode and packet injection. Now it might be a little confusing to test this both before and after purchasing a card, so today we'll show you how to check both on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. A suitable wireless network adapter usually contains a couple of the same characteristics. First, the ability to enter wireless monitor mode allows us to listen to wireless conversations which were not intended for our computer, letting us sniff packets that were maybe meant for some other important conversation and do things like intercept uh, passwords or websites that people nearby are visiting. Next, we'll want to have packet injection, which is the ability to inject packets into a wireless conversation in order to trick the recipients into thinking that it came from someone else. Now this is useful for doing things like grabbing a Wi-Fi handshake, or even doing things like jamming a network. And we can explore some of these as we test our adapter later on. Now there's a couple different ways of testing this, and one of the best ways if you haven't already purchased your network adapter is to look at the chipset that you're considering, and then go on Aircrack NG and take a look at their listings of which chipsets are supported. Now this is a really good idea because once you learn which chipsets are supported, if you see a new network adapter that uh, contains that chipset, you can generally assume that it will be supported too. Now you can also check out the article I wrote on Nullbyte for selecting a good wireless network adapter, and uh, those are a good solid uh, series of choices as well. Now if you already have purchased one, or if you want to test if your internal computer's adapter is uh, suitable for using with Kali Linux, you can run this in a couple of ways. First, just by attempting to put it into monitor mode, we'll show you whether or not th that feature is supported in most cases. But next, we'll test it with AirPlay NG and see if it's capable of packet injection as well. After that, we'll actually detect a network that we can attack without getting in trouble, so one that we have permission to test, and then we'll use B-Side NG to actually attempt a handshake capture to see if all of our wireless cracking tools will work with this chipset. Once you have a chipset that you or a network adapter with a chipset you want to test and uh, a network that you are allowed to attack without getting in trouble, we can begin. Now, if you haven't already bought your wireless network adapter, one of the best places to start is this aircrackng.org website. Now, this is technically the old or deprecated article. However, there is a lot of great information here for anyone looking to buy a wireless network adapter because it contains a lot of information about how the chipset performs. Now you can see here whether it's supported by AeroDump uh, NG for Linux and AeroPlay for Linux. And these are both kind of a good indicator for whether it supports packet injection and monitor mode. So when you scroll down, you can see the information for a lot of different chipsets here. Um, and while there is an updated article, it doesn't have a nice broken down table like this. So this is kind of my go-to when I was originally doing the research. Now, if you want to see some more information, there's actually some great content on Nullbyte for solving this problem, including this article that goes through the most common chipsets that are used and compatible with Kali Linux. Now, these include the Ethereos AR9271, the RA-Link RT3070, the RA-Link RT3572, and the Realtek 8187L. Now, in 2017, um, Kali Linux began supporting the Realtek RTL8812AU. However, it does not come uh, kind of pre-bundled in Kali Linux, and there were some reports of it not working all the time, so I don't necessarily recommend this chipset for beginners. Now, some um, user feedback and some research also suggested the RA-Link RT5370N is also compatible, but in general, you can count on these chipsets to be compatible with Kali Linux and have all the features that you're looking for. Now, in this article, uh, it also goes into a lot of information about the individual cards that support these various chipsets, and you can see some recommendations on which ones you might want to start out with, starting uh, from this article here. Now, this is the one of the newer alpha cards, which includes the, uh, the chipset that is not supported out of the box in Kali Linux. So if you're looking at one of these kind of fancy uh, race car looking ones, keep in mind that it can be more complicated for a beginner to set up. Now, if you're curious about the performance of these, there's another Nullbyte article going by the name of um, How to Select a Field-Tested Kali Linux Compatible Wireless Adapter, which goes into real-world original research on how these various tools perform. 
Now the writer here went through and actually tested each one of these cards that we suggested in the previous article. So you can see all the results here and that actually we tested packet injection and monitor mode and all of them were performing very well with the exception of this alpha AWUS051NH or as we called it the NEF. So out of all of these, we got pretty good results out of most of them. So you can count on these cards and chipsets as well to all be a pretty good bet if you're starting out and wanting to select a chipset that supports all of these various modes. Next, if you've already purchased a card or if you want to check the card inside your computer that you're using with Kali Linux, we'll go into a couple of the tests you can do yourself to test out whether your card supports packet injection and monitor mode. First, we'll open a terminal window and we'll need to put our card into monitor mode to see if it supports it in the first place. So to do so, type ifconfig, and in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just test the internal card on this laptop I'm using. Now here you can see the name is WLAN0, but if you want, you can also use the command IPA to show the same information in a different format. Now here we can see the name of our card and I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen so we can put it into monitor mode using airmon ng start wlan0. Now with this command, we should see the chipset, uh, which this is actually also a really handy way of discovering the chipset of your card. And we can see that monitor mode is enabled for WLAN zero. And we also should see that our uh, card name has now changed to WLAN zero mon. So let's type ifconfig. And there we go, WLAN zero mon. Now that we're in monitor mode, I can go ahead and use this card in arrow dump ng in order to effectively dump the packets that we're detecting on our card, which is now in monitor mode. So if this wasn't working, we would see instead an error that said that this mode was not supported on the card. So this is a good first step and I'm gonna go ahead and clear and then type arrow dump ng and then WLAN zero mon, which is the new name of our card. So when I press return, we should see a whole bunch of information. And this is great because it means we're successfully sniffing, sniffing on our card. So I'm gonna press control C and we can see that there's lots of different networks that we've been able to detect. And I'm going to pick the one that is our test network because in this step, it's important to identify the network you have uh, permission to attack. Otherwise you can get in a lot of trouble. So again, make sure that the network you have is the one that you are uh, either using maybe a hotspot or even maybe the uh, pirate box that we built in one of our previous guides. So now that we have the name of the network, we can use another command in order to actually attempt to capture a handshake. And this is going to be kind of the step where we see if all of this is working. So prior to this, we can type clear again and test to kind of get an idea of how this is going to work by running a very simple test in AirPlay NG. So typing air with an E at the end, dash NG gives us a list of different commands we can run. And we can see here that there is a tac tac test option we can run, which uh, tests the injection and the quality of the injectable packets. So let's go ahead and run that attack now. So we'll need to type airplay ng and then tac tac test and then the name of the interface we'll be using which is wlan zero mon. So you can see we're attempting to broadcast probe requests. We see three different access points and boom, injection is working. Just like that, we can quickly determine whether or not we're able to inject uh, packets into a Wi-Fi conversation. And if the results here are positive, then it means that we are good to go and it looks like our attack will probably succeed. So the tool we're going to be using to actually try this in practice and see if we can inject disruptive packets to cause a wireless handshake to be generated will be B-side NG. So let's take a look at how it works by typing B-side NG and then tac tac help. So here we can specify the victim BSSID. Uh, we can go into some other things as well. And because it looks like we're going to want to limit this attack, to just the ESSID, we'll be using the TAC-R, uh, which is the ESSID regex. So let's go ahead and type B-side NG, uh, the name of the adapter, which is WLAN zero mon, and then the argument, which is gonna be TAC capital R 
and then I'm gonna paste the name of the network that we are attacking. And because I have a space, I'm also going to use a quotation mark and hope that the regex doesn't interpret that as something fancy. So off we are, we are scanning, and if I don't get a result on here, it could be because the regular expression isn't interpreting the result correctly. But it looks like it did and already succeeded. So there we go, we just got a handshake. Uh, if your card is compatible and your wireless network is nearby, and of course, if you have a device that is connected to your wireless network, uh, this will not work if no devices are connected because it functions by disconnecting someone momentarily and then having them reconnect, you will get a handshake often this quickly. But in our test, it only took us, um, let's see, well, we started at uh, eight seconds and then we got it at 17 seconds. So obviously we were able to get this in practically no time at all. And this is a great way for you to test your own card against a network that you own to make sure that the packet injection and everything else is working in a functional and productive way. With the right wireless network adapter, there's a lot of different interesting hacking tools and techniques you can begin to learn. I encourage you to check out some of our earlier videos on Wi-Fi jamming, password cracking, and all sorts of other Wi-Fi attacks in order to understand some of the great new things your wireless network adapter can do. Now, there are a number of other more advanced alpha adapters, which are newer and you might have heard of, but they do require you to download and install some additional libraries to work, and we have heard some reports of failures, plus we haven't had time to test them out ourselves. So while there are some additional wireless network adapters that do work, they have chipsets that aren't fully currently supported by Kali Linux, at least not out of the box. We'll go into some more of these another time, but for now, these wireless network adapters we mentioned are a great way to get started. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, shoot me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time.